Start us up. Quit chewing in my ear. Start us up. I'm going to slap this dude. He's chewing in my ear, everybody. I got cookies, man. Start us he's up. Eat, he's eating cookies while I'm trying to start a video. Start us up. This is number 28. Rock and roll. We're going to talk about summer prep today. That's right. We are. Because it's very summery. Summer. We're it's very, very hot. Oh, it's burning up. I can't even wear no drawers. Burn, he, the dude's not wearing any drawers. Well, I had to take them off. I'm too hot. You know what the worst part is? It's just the humidity. Yeah. If it yeah, wasn't humid, it wouldn't be bad. It is very humid. I mean, I could take the heat, but the humidity is bad. So. So what are people um, going to do when it's this hot? Well, what'd They're you do? for summer. What'd you do uh, over the past few days? You hung some stands? You... I, no, no. I went out and I got mock scrapes started. Okay. I got, I got some, some yarn from Rubline Scent and mm -hmm. opened up. I had a mock scrape that I established three years ago near a stand site and I started it and they took it over and ran with it. And of course it really wasn't active right now, but I'm activating it, reactivating it, I should say, and getting some interest back to that area. Now, did you put it on a, you put it on a main trail? This is not necessarily a main trail. It is just an area. Uh, it's like funneled. Mm. So, you know, the critters ramble through this valley. You put a stand right there? Yeah, I have a stand site there that I use um, in that area. Um, and then I, I did another area, which is not a stand site, but it is a, uh, a community scrape. Hmm. And I am just doing it to get a uh, inventory of what's in the area. Yep. Uh, I am not actually hunting that spot. As a matter of fact, one of my buddies has a stand there, not too far away from that spot. So I'm not going to intrude on the area, but one of the things is when you are helping people out, this scent company, when they, when you're using their scent, obviously they want pictures, <laughs> you know, that when you have a partnership with somebody, you got to do your part. So I, I, that was, I was going around and, and taking over some, some, uh, some spots, some scrapes. I was taking over some exi existing scrapes and uh, hanging, hanging uh, cameras, nice. and sweating very heartily. Yes. When do you plan on uh, setting tree stands? <sighs> um, now, I we're diff to... we're different here now, so our time frames are a little bit different because your season don't start till October. Yeah. Mine starts September third. Yeah, I I usually go out five weeks ahead of season start and hang them um so you're looking like the end of august probably yeah yeah gotcha. i don't get real excited about getting them in early um yeah that's public land yeah because that's that's why because the more you display stuff the more people that when they do start scouting and walking around and see a stand hanging there, oh, this must be a good spot. And then they start scouting around me looking to hang a, hang a stand. Now you're in PA, so you're allowed to put a stand up and leave it there. Until two weeks after season, it's supposed to be out. Right, every, but you can leave year. it there all season long. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I can leave it. So Maryland, I cannot do that. You I've seen to, that email. You have to put it up? And then take it down the same day. Nightly. Yes. That is weird. Yep. It's always been that way. Really? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, we, we can hang them. And, now, uh, obviously, private land, you can do what you want. But public yeah. land, you got to you can put it up and you have to take it down. Yeah. Hmm. Yep. So we, so. I mean, there's, we, there's rules and regulations. Like, I, there's certain things you can't do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you can't. You can't stay overnight. You can't have a fire, you know, stuff like that. Can't use screwing steps. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. I can't screw anything in. So everything, mm -hmm. everything I do, like if I'm self-filming, like I have to have clamp on, you know, 
uh, attachments and things mm -hmm. for cameras. Uh, uh, when I obviously you can't use tree steps or anything stupid like that. You know, I have climbing sticks and things and chain on stands. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I, I don't have a bow holder that you screw in or anything like that, you know? So for the guys, um, the guys that have private land, let's talk about some of the things that they should be doing now, you know, get getting it out of the way and prep a deer season, whether it starts in September or if it starts October 1st. So a lot of guys don't even, you know, you know how it goes. Everybody waits till the last minute to prepare for a food plot or something. So yeah. if you're thinking now to plant a food plot, we're July, it's July 6th. Well, if they're thinking now, they better get their soil test now, like yesterday. Yeah, yeah. so like yesterday. obviously soil test, if, you know, you should be doing that. If not, the main thing, main priority would be getting your weeds under control so you can get one or two springs in uh before it's time to plant your fall mm -hmm. food plot and then everybody listening next week on the podcast next week next episode is going to be what to plant and when do you plant it mm. so that's next that'll be episode 29 um listen up yep listen up uh but yeah so we control get that get get a spraying done and i just saw it's interesting i was at tractor supply and you know how like when you buy glyphosate, it's in like a two gallon jug or two and a half gallon two jug. Two and a half, yeah. They now sell one gallon jugs. I've seen that, yes. I've seen that. I just yep. saw that this year. Yep. Um so ours that, had ours had one gallons. It had it? Yep. Oh, mine just now yeah. started having it this year. Yeah, they, they had it last year too. Okay. But yeah, even some... even one gallon was almost a hundred bucks. <laughs> so one gallon in truck supply was I think forty eight dollars. Hmm. Where I'm at, forty eight dollars. That, that's what two and a half gallon used to be. I know. I know. <laughs> that's um, ridiculous. Yeah, because not a lot of people need no. or want two and a half gallons. But so. if, you, if yeah, if you if you watch Tractor Supply though, I think you can get the two and a half gallon jug now. I think it's down to like ninety bucks. Yeah, it is. It is. It's down low. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, any anybody that's wanting to do food pots this for fall. Now would be the time to control your weeds, soil samples. Get you still got plenty of time. Get lime out there, burn it, and down. Um, yep, burn it to the ground. And uh, obviously, if you already have existing, like say perennial plots, uh, next weekend I'm going to be mowing mine. I'm giving it a good mowing. Uh, it's up pretty tall. Uh, deer still hammering it, but it's getting to that stage. Um, so good mowing. Obviously, don't mow if it's really dry and hot. Uh, if you're getting moisture, then it should be fine. Um, some people are still in a drought. You know, there's still some areas where it just hasn't rained. Yeah, I'm doing okay here. We got lots of rain and the dews are heavy. Oh, yeah. And, and my clover headed out again. Yeah. So I did mow again this week in hopes that any little bare spots, you know, that I could reseed it that way. Mm -hmm. By blowing, you know, the discharge of the mower, I was blown into those spotty areas, hoping yeah. that, that it will catch in that in that area. Yeah, the the drought's definitely over where I'm at. It was dry there for a while. It was oh, dry. Yeah. We we got really wet. We went from oh. from drought to monsoon. Yeah, it won't stop raining now. It yeah. rains every day. But I mowed, and talking about prep for fall, um, I I mowed really short the mm -hmm. area that I am going to tear up and put my fall plot in. Mm. Now I mowed it really short. So my next step is I'm going to go over and set the cultivators at about two inches deep or so. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to go in there and drag it all around, tear up whatever's in there. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of oats in there and a lot of weeds, of course. <laughs> there was, there was clover, oats and weeds. So I'm going to go in there and tear that all up and let it sit for two weeks, mm -hmm. spray it probably the third week, let it sit one more week, and then probably plant. I'm hoping to plant the first week of August, depending on rain or moisture. The first week of August? Yeah, I'm going to try you're, to plant it. You're early, son. Yep. I'm planting Wait. it early this year because last year I planted the end of August. Mm -hmm. And 
it only wouldn't get past this high because the deer just hammered the crap out of it. Gotcha. I plan on planting the second, the third weekend of August. Mm -hmm. And I'm planting mother load from the main. Um, well, I'm just putting in no BS. So, I mean, yeah. that's got, that's got uh, the oats in it. Mm -hmm. So the oats will nurse the radish and the clovers and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to let that get a good start, you know, get that popping because like I said, it's going to nurse that other stuff. Yeah. But there should be enough, there should be enough of those other two clover fields over there that they shouldn't hammer the snot out of that. Yeah. Maybe if you give it, maybe mow your clover like a week or two prior to you planting one more time. So you got that fresh growth on the clover side. Yeah. They can they can kind of maybe stay over there. That's just not, I don't know if it'll work, but that's just an idea. I don't know. I don't know. So far, so far they're not really in the center portion too much, even though mm -hmm. even though there was oats, you know. Right. There was there was oats up about a foot and a half or so, and they mm -hmm. they weren't really hitting them. Yeah. I didn't see any browse pressure on them. Well, now um, it's also a good time for guys to start getting uh, tree stands hung. Uh, again, if you already have existing ones, loosen straps, check straps, retighten them, put new straps on, clear shooting lanes. Um, I like to have shooting lanes cleared well before the season, um, just so nothing looks, you know, deer have time to adjust to, you know, the foliage and stuff being cut. But um, yeah, I got, I moved one stand last weekend. Um, I just moved one down to a lower creek area um, that, I, that I'm going to hunt. And then next weekend, not this weekend, but next weekend, I'm going back. I got to mow. I'm going to mow my clover, give that good maintenance mow. And then I have to replace um, a stand up on the ridge and then replace another stand and a couple straps on the other stands. And then I'm pretty much done for the year. All my okay. trails. Go ahead. Here's a question for you. I'm What's just gonna I'm gonna act like I'm Joe Blow from Kokomo here. <laughs> if ahead. you if if someone asks you, hey Dave, you hunt private property, so do you put your stand in the same spot every year? Mm -hmm. Do you use the same areas? Yeah, because you you have the same travel routes yearly. Mm -hmm. See, I, I'm just saying because like uh, with me on public land, sometimes I'll go mobile. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I don't do that really on private land unless it may unless it's like a new property and I haven't really where my stands aren't aren't working. Right. You know, I may I may move a little. Well, because here's the thing: a lot of people will like like when we did the video about uh, a stand placement. Mm -hmm. Um, people were like writing to me saying, "Well, how do you know where to hang a stand?" Okay, we can talk about that. You know, and one of the answers I shot back to them was, obviously, it has to be a travel corridor or a, or a badly down, beaten down trail, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and using intel from game cameras and stuff will help tell you that, you know. Mm -hmm. Even even the mock scrape video I just had come out, someone wrote to me and said, how do you know where to put a mock scrape at or, or any scrape, you know. And I said, well… Uh, intersection of paths um you know just a badly beaten down trail mm -hmm. um i like obviously to find a beaten down trail and just find something that overhangs uh, mainly like i said before in the, in that last video was uh for some reason they just they like they like to make their scrapes underneath the spruce overhanging limbs mm -hmm. yeah you'll hear guys that'll tell you religiously that uh, their deer scrape under beech trees or, or if you're going to make a, a scrape tree you cut down and use a beech tree you know stuff like that well I've heard that about oak too people well, say you, don't, it, you use nothing but oak you got to use what's there you know what obviously, I mean? it, yeah obviously you do if, but. if the deer if you're if you have no beech trees on your on your property and all of a sudden you put a beech <laughs> yeah right right they're going to be like where where that come from yeah, like, right, right that doesn't look good <laughs> so if you have if you're full of beech trees then obviously using a beech limb is Here, ideal here's my advice 
here's my advice. Take a walk around your woods and see mm -hmm. what they're rubbing on. Yeah. Whatever they're rubbing on. They'll tell you. Take one of those trees and make a scrape tree out of it or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I did last year. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I was I was finding that the oak trees were rubbed or, or overhanging yep. oak li uh, limbs were being nipped upon, you mm -hmm. know. Well, on my property, I have <clears throat> no conifers. I got – there's nothing. There's no spruce trees. There's no pine trees. There's no nothing. There's no beech trees. Um, so I don't have any anything like that. What is um, it? There's a lot of maple, mm. uh, silver maple. Um, yeah. So they they took the hardwoods out when they took. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There actually there is one. There there's two beech trees. They're huge. They're up on the ridge. Um, but the rest is like maple. There's um, uh, elm. A lot of elm. Uh, there's a couple oaks. Not many. Uh, very little. Man, we had that problem at the last property. We did. They took the oaks. Money tree. Yeah. yeah. But it's okay. Actually, I took a lot of the maples and um, some of the ones that were perfectly straight, I left. But the other ones that were all jacked up, I actually hinge cut them because those sprouts that come out of them things, um, they're yeah. full. They're they tear them up. Oh, I like I like to cut maples down in the in the like around March time or so, yeah. March or April, mm -hmm. just take a tree down and let the stump sprout. You've yeah. heard of, you've heard of stump sprouts, mm -hmm. man, they nail the snot out of that. And that's, and that, that those roots, that tree tries to live and it pushes all its energy into them sprouts. Mm -hmm. And it's like the most sweetest and the most nutritious thing in the woods at that point in time. Yeah. You're really helping your deer. Well, I guess it'd be a year and a half ago now. When I TSI that ridge top, it's about maybe a half acre. Um, I did hinge cut and flush cut a lot of maples, and mm -hmm. it is thick as thick can be in there. Yeah, there's so many sprouts coming in, and I got so much regrowth. And I had a little bit last year, but this year now I'm starting to get the woody brows coming in, mm -hmm. and it's just a now it's just a huge bedding area for them. And I have mm -hmm. two. I have a lower access trail that I made and then an upper access so they can skirt the edges both. Mm -hmm. And it comes right around the, the uh, ridge top stand, I call it. But I have one stand up there. I will not ever hunt it this year until the time is right. And it'll probably be sometime during the rut. Mm -hmm. um, I won't go back there whatsoever. Um, I have a cell cam up there with a, with a solar panel on it. So I'll never have to change the batteries so I can kind of keep an eye on it. Um, but speaking about what you said earlier about, uh, you know, guys asking you, like, where do you set tree stands? Right. Um, I can briefly describe where mine are. So mm -hmm. I try to keep mine on the edges and I leave the center, center of their property alone. Now, if I have very poor access on my, on my property, I can only access from one way. Um, so I can, I can only do what I can do. Um, but I, I have a lot of spots on my property throughout the center and everything where i have multiple fingers of trails that go into one mm. so it's like a huge intersections that i have a lot of those i actually cut trees down and blocked them off and veered them a certain way so they can navigate around the perimeter of the property and then that ridge top is kind of the center so i catch them coming from there from that ridge top and they funnel through the trails that i have cut and opened and they come then they can work their way out to my food plot so i have a couple on the sides and a couple up front to where i can catch that finger of movement where it mm -hmm. intersects into one trail that's a very good place to uh hang tree stands okay now where where i hunt it is <clears throat> i call it the mountain but a lot of locals call it the point and what it is is it's it's state property that goes around a bend in the river mm -hmm. and there's a series of benches there on that round top and i try to stay near the top okay the most highest ridged bench because at the very top 
is a white oak flat. And the deer that stay down below on the other lower benches down near the river, before dark, they all work their way uphill and try to make it up to feed in that mm -hmm. white oak flat. So that is my strategy. I, I go around the hills top on the side hills closest to the top, the last bench to the top, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's where I put my stands. I just, I walk those ridges and I try to find the heaviest uh, trails that I can next to the heaviest, thickest, gnarliest crap I can find. When you go in in the mornings, how long does it take you to get there? Um, depends on if I bike in or walk in. You're walking um, in. If I walk in, I park at a gate and walk in access only unless I have a bicycle. Um, when I walk in, it is approximately oh, I would say it's it's probably thir between 35 and 40 minutes to walk it. It's pretty far. It is. It's 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 a good track. Um, that's why I, I have so much mobile. Now that's to the furthest. That's to my furthest stand way out on the point. Um, some of the closer stands I can get to in 20, 25 minutes. Okay. You know. So when me, you, and Zach go sick of deer hunting this year, mm -hmm. if we don't have bikes, it's about mm -hmm. an hour walk. Oh, wow. But it's all flat. Yeah, 100% flat. You walk right on the trail. If we have bikes, 10, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Mm. Um, oh, we'll have bikes then. Oh, we'll have bikes. <laughs> yeah, keep the keep the sweating down. Yeah, we ride right in. Mm -hmm. Um, my furthest walk for my farm, if I go to that ridge top stand, it's pretty much downhill. <laughs> then I got to cross a creek. Then I got to go up. Then I got to turn again and go up huge hill. So I'm probably talking about a 20 minute walk. Yeah. I got to really watch what I wear in mm -hmm. because I get a sweaty mess going in. Yeah. So, you know, my pack is so thick and <laughs> full of clothing and stuff. You know how it is when you go in, it's like 65 degrees and then you get on stand and it turns into 50, 55 degrees as it starts to fade out at light. Mm -hmm. And then you're freezing, you're shivering by the time you're leaving. And then you get all hot and sweaty on the way back up. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And, uh, actually, I get, I don't know about you, but I sweat worse in the morning getting to my stand. Yeah. I don't know why. Coming out, I don't sweat as bad. Well, you're going downhill. Yeah, some of it. Some of it. Yeah. But yeah, when I go in, I think, I don't know, it's probably the anticipation and nerves. Probably. You know, going in in the dark and trying not to make any noise and spooky. trying not to spook anything. It's spooky going in in the dark. Yeah, including myself. I don't want to spook myself. Hey, <laughs> I spook my, I. I've been alone walking at the old farm, going in the woods. That place and, was spooky. And I was walking through that trail. You know where it was, where we, where that mud hole was. As soon as yeah. you pass that, there was pines on both sides, and yeah, then birds tight. used to get up in there in the dark. And you <laughs> walk by, and they go, Aah! and they fly through there. <laughs> and I've jumped so many times, I thought I was going to die. I just said, "Take me, let's, <laughs> let's look, take me." Yeah, it. Uh... I have what I walk is an old tram road mm -hmm. where they in the back in the day when they timbered like in early 1900s, they used to use oxen back there, oxen and mules and things. Mm -hmm. And that's how they uh, used the property. So there's a series of switchback, you know, tram roads and stuff. Well, they've grown in so much that you can barely, you know, 
you can walk through them. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it's very tight now. So it's hard not only to maneuver that in the morning, but walking through there, you talk about spooky. Yeah. It, it's dang near a tunnel because it's it's like almost growed over and it's rhododendron. Mm-hmm. You're walking through this tunnel of rhododendron and then you break out of, and there's an opening and it goes back into another tunnel of rhododendron. That's spooky. I got to walk through three tunnels of rhododendron that are probably 60 or 80 yards long. Say rhododendron one more time. Rhododendron. It is spooky, man, because there's, I mean, that property is, it was full of bears years ago. Because there, there's a lot of rhododendron. Because there's rhododendron. Um, yeah, it was it was full of bears all the time. I mean, and you always like you're walking through them tunnels and you hear something running, you know. Spooky. I mean, it's probably just a deer, but probably. it is creepy, man. So what else, um, you know, should yeah. people be working on right now? Yeah, getting back to subject at hand. Um, what else? What like other said, uh, mo- maintenance get- clover tree stands, checking straps. You know, you, there's still plenty of time to scout. So. What up? Uh, what else can people do, or should be doing? Um. Well, you said already checking your tree stands, and make sure they're safe. Yep. Straps, clover, mate, cl- uh, mowing, spraying. They better be shooting their bows. You know what's funny practice, about that? Practice, practice, practice. People should be shooting. Yes. How many and people do you know get their bow out three weeks before season? Me. I know um, a million of them, and you're one of them. So here's the thing with that i have never really enjoyed shooting my bow (laughs) i mean i i'd like it some um but i get my bow out literally two weeks before season and shoot it yeah and i never have really ever have a problem the bow just sits there all in a case it's tuned up midsummer i'll take it you know I'm, i'm getting ready to take it to my autumn sky outfitters by me to Mm -hmm. uh, get new string and paper tuned and just gone over but that thing will sit there until two weeks before season i shoot it a couple arrows a week and it's dead on and rarely do i ever have a problem um but the more that i shoot if i if i shoot more the worse that i get really yeah i've always been that way and you know, I see people a lot shoot and shoot and shoot. And it's like every single day. Yeah. And then I, I follow them and all of us every year they wound deer, wound deer, <laughs> wound deer. And I'm not saying that's a, I don't, I guess it's different for everybody. You know, obviously it's probably a good idea to be shooting. Um, but I think it's individual. You know, yeah, I just do it for muscle memory. Yeah, you know, that you know, like I said, it's not because you're using idea. different muscles. You're using different muscles that you don't even know yep. you're using. Yeah, and yeah, I haven't started yet. Like people are asking me, or hey, did you start you're, shooting yet? You're getting on me, and you're not even shooting yet. Heck no, we're I, I don't have to hunt till October. Yeah, you know, I have to I'm three early, months away. Yeah, early September. Um, now what I did start doing last two years ago is right around July. Um, I start doing push-ups. I start doing a lot of walking, hiking. I'll do, I do a lot of walking. I'll do crunches. I'll do like, since I used to box and stuff, I'll do shadow boxing a lot. Just kind of, your shadow you know, would beat you up. Boom, 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 boom. Um, but a lot of push-ups. So just because, you know, I'm climbing, you know, climbing your tree, you know, shooting your bow, that's all going to help. And that freaking sick of deer hunt kills you. So, um. I did start doing that. So people, you know, just, you know, it's funny. I want to talk about this real quick because I, it messes with people. And I, you see the guys, you know, celebrity hunters, whatever, but you see these guys, right. That that's, that's pushing all these massive intense workouts, carrying deer on their shoulders, pigs, bear, and they're taking pictures of it online. To me, that is the stupidest thing in the world. I've never, I've it, never carried an animal out unless I cord, I quartered up yeah, an animal. Before. These I, I, guys do it. They and they take the picture for social media, thinking it's like, I don't know. I just it bothers. Dude, I don't. I don't want to bloody up my camo. 
Well, not you only get stained up and yeah, I just once that crap bleeding all over to your back. I just I don't, don't even I don't even throw gobblers over my back. Yeah, I just I don't, don't do that. I grab them, I grab them, yep. carry them off to the side. Yeah, I just don't get it, man. Like, yeah, I mean, I understand that. being phys, you know, for your health and just you enjoy being physically fit. I get that, but you don't have to do that to be a deer hunter. Like, I feel like, no. and we had an episode about this. And I feel like people are, what's the, how do I word it? Um, they're looking for additional ways or outlets to try to be a better deer hunter, like buying, like buying good camo or working out or um, buying a certain gadget or, or, you know what I mean? They're looking for something to try to make them a deer, a better deer hunter, but a better deer hunter comes from learning and, and how to, and learning how to scout. Well, it's a series of you see what I'm trying trial to say? and error, making you mistakes and learning from it. Yeah. It's just that people are trying, oh, if I better, if I buy a better camo, I'm going to be a better deer hunter. If I work out and flip tires and do this and do this and take ice bath, all this stuff, oh, I'm going to be a better deer. No, you're not. It's just, it messes with people because they see some kind of famous hunter doing it and they think in their mind, Oh, well, if I do that, I'm going to be a better deer hunter. Just like that guy. Yeah. And it, you don't, you don't need to do that. Like, I mean, so there's, there's a certain amount of conditioning, you know, you can condition yourself. Um, I mean, be ready for whatever you're, you're going to go do. I mean, I'm not in perfect shape. I mean, I'm I'm getting older. You're gassed still, out already. I still didn't lose my baby fat from this winter. You know, I'm working on that. Uh, I'm still trying to walk a bunch. And I'd like to see some people try to keep up with me on this mountain, though. I mean, well, it is it's rough. It is. Yeah. But, I'm not saying nobody should be a couch potato. Not I mean, be Well, there's lots fit. of people that are. They're work out potatoes and then they go out there and that you know that's why there's so many people that they won't go into the woods that's why you ride down a road and you see orange 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 you know because they're lazy they're out of shape you know or they sat at the bar last night and they're too drunk you know don't get me started but anyhow yeah I, i'd be conditioned for what you're yeah. throwing yourself well, into again i'm I want to rephrase it. I'm not saying don't work out, you know, obviously pay attention to your health, be right. physically active, physically fit, but you don't need to do all the intense stuff be just because some famous person or something is carrying a deer out on their shoulders. And it, to, it's just, you don't need to do that. Like no. learn, learn how, learn the woods, learn scouting, learn how to track deer, learn how to, pay attention to deer sign that will make you a better deer hunter not flipping tires and all this other stuff that that's my point watch old Ra roger raglan videos watch old Ra <laughs> roger raglan videos fitzgerald <laughs> fitzgerald you know back in the day dan fitzgerald was a monster He's i got a bad dude. i got his videos where he used to stalk through the corn on windy days with his with his recurve and plowed deer as they're bedded in the corn. Yep. He was a bad dude. He was, yep. he was something before his time, really. Yeah. He's still, he's still doing it. No, I mean, he, he, he used to do stuff for attention. I mean, oh, yeah. Well, but, he was making videos. But hunting, though, he, he was, he, he had it down. He yep. was selling videos for sure. Yep. Definitely. For sure. Well, hopefully. So, yeah, that's um, all I can think of, though, as far as prep. I mean, what are we yeah, missing, I mean, guys? Leave a comment. What tree stands, safety, maintenance of clover, prepping for the food plots, soil samples, you know, glyphosate, kill the areas, burn to the ground, scouting. You still got plenty of time. You can scout. Now, obviously, scouting now is, you know, their patterns are going to change a little bit from summer patterns to fall. Yeah. Or at least you have a general idea what's going on. So always boots on the ground. And um, that's why I didn't go hog wild with my with my mock scrapes, you know? Yeah, right. I'm just. As the season gets closer, I will actually put some scrapes, freshen some scrapes up 
right around the stand sites. Yeah, yeah. yeah right now, I'm just kind of getting inventory and getting pictures for for the partnerships and things, you know. But yeah. yeah. Well, again, so next next episode number twenty nine is going to be all about what to plant food plot wise for this fall, and when do you plant it? Because there's a huge misconception about that, and yeah. um, Chris, we're going we're going to break that down. Yeah. And uh, so make sure you pay attention to that. So that's yeah. wrapping up twenty eight. Listen up. Yeah, listen up. Listen up. Um, <laughs> that wraps up episode twenty eight. So, um, any questions? Let us know. Yeah, drop us some comments. Hey, if you want to hear anything in particular, let us know too. Like mm -hmm. if you have a question or something, send it to one of us. Uh, get over. We both have YouTube channels. Some guy, I had two people now ask me, hey, who's that guy you, you're on there with? I mean, what what's his channel name? Mm. You know, so I, you got two new subscribers, dude. Nice. I'm sending them over in, in droves. Well, everybody knows your channel. You can yeah, go right. subscribe. <laughs> everybody knows my channel. The name of my channel is City Sticker Chris. Go subscribe. Even if you're on Dave's YouTube channel, you can subscribe to me. Yeah. I'm on the march to 1,000, man. You are. I need like 100 more subscribers or something. That's it? Oh, you're right there. 100. Well, it keeps going up and down. Mm. I was like 105 away or something. And now I think I'm back to 110. I don't know. They come and they go. I, but yeah, I... I want to get 100 more subscribers, get to 1,000, and I think I'm going to give away a a, a Gerber. Is it a Gerber? No, it's not a Gerber knife. I forget what kind of knife it is now off the top of my head. It's a big name, it? big name brand knife, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it, and there's a guy in my local area here that uh, etches, laser etches. Mm -hmm. and I think I'm going to have a special edition one-off knife. That I'm going to give away when I hit 1,000. Nice. There you go. 